Hospital porters, pride and dignity. Stop the New World Order. Welcome to Hapanwo TV. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Hapanwo TV viewers, this film is all about a mirror. Now, you may think, well, mirror? Why is that interesting? Why am I making a film about a mirror? There's mirrors everywhere. There's nothing Hapanwo-esque about that, is there? Well, there is in this case, because this mirror is very, very old. And it's very, very special. And it's very, very sacred. <coughs> and it was, um, it was found... Didcot, Oxfordshire, um, which is a uh, not particularly profound or sacred place. It's famous for its giant power station, um, and I think I've been there a couple of times before. Um, I didn't enjoy the experience much. Oh yeah, I went to my nuclear fusion power video. I went there because I well, well I went to Cullum, which is near Didcot, but I had to pay a take a little trip to Didcot first. I remember. Um, but really, um, this was just found in a field, and it illustrates how close the past is, and what the past might have been like. I mean, it makes you—it just got me thinking about um, what the world was like before the Illuminati, and in Britain, that specifically means the Roman Empire. Um, but it's possible that the Anglo-Saxon culture was not Illuminati, Illuminati occupied. And then later the Norman Conquest occupied, returned Illuminati rule to Britain. I'm not sure. Um, I discussed this in previous videos actually. There will be links in the description box to interesting videos and articles which may give you some background to what I'm talking about right now if you, you're not familiar with my work on this subject. Um, but uh, it just got me thinking, I mean, it just got me thinking that the world is what it is now but it wasn't always and what it might be that's the question but anyway let's have a look at the mirror and this is the mirror this is the mirror that they found just take a moment to admire it we're looking at it from the back um, the front of it which is the which was the reflecting surface of the mirror was it was different to modern mirrors which are usually made with they have a aluminium coating or mercury on glass this would have been um, polished metal. It's, it's, it's a um, it's copper alloy. It is a uh, there are two elements in it, and um, it would have been polished so finely that you really get a good a good reflection. Now, when this was found, it's it, it's one in one of the best conditions for because because about thirty of these mirrors have been found over the course of the years in the British Isles and and also in other in on mainland Europe where where the Celtic culture dominated during the first millennium BC and um, this they are really amazing. I mean, they look they're no different really to modern mirrors, handheld mirrors. You can buy the mirrors in this format with a round body and a handle. This is, um, these uh, patterns are amazing. Um, these are what's known, these are what, is, what are known as Laten patterns, these interlocking swirls with the um, links and the and the chevrons and the, the wide and the thinning lines. Um, to me these look like crop circles actually. Um, and that's very interesting because it makes you wonder about the background crop circles and what they are and where they come from and what inspires them. <coughs> maybe it is, maybe crop circles are inspired by spirits from the past. Um, but it's just really remarkable they went to such lengths to decorate this mirror. I mean, the Celts did that. All their things were decorated. I mean, they used a lot of the tools and utensils that we do. Um, their spoons and forks and, and, and eating utensils, their, their cutlery, were pretty much the same as ours, but they had these amazing decorations on them, same as their chairs and their settees and and um, boots and buckles and things like that, and weapons especially. Um, um, hunting weapons and weapons of war were very, very highly decorated because, the, because it, it, it must have been for spiritual reasons, because the Celts would have wanted the gods to help them if they were hunting for animals to eat, if they were hungry, or if they were fighting a war against an enemy tribe, they would want the gods to bless them so they could win. It's really quite um, beautiful, and there are no straight lines in Celtic art. 
it's all curves, it's all tangents, it's all arcs. In Manda Scott's book, uh, the Boudicca Quartet, which I've mentioned in, if you, well, I don't mention it in this video, but I, if you go to the links in the description box, um, you'll see that there are videos before I talk about Manda Scott and her Boudicca Quartet, um, which are really amazing books, really quite incredible. Um, so this is just something it's something so precious it's it's unbelievable it's wonderful it really is and of course um when this mirror was found um the man who found it he um he managed to sell it he sold it to an anonymous buyer but luckily um the oxfordshire museum managed to raise enough money to to buy him out so it, basically they persuaded the buyer who's never been named to sell the mirror to them, they obviously offered him a higher price for it, um, or her. So, um, the mirror was sent to the Oxford Mu Oxfordshire Museum. It's not currently on display anywhere, but it is in storage there, from the last thing I heard. Um, it's in... It's incredible, one of only 18 in the British Isles. They have 30 altogether. And it's the only one to be found in Oxfordshire. Um, several people have talked about this. There's a guy called David Moon, who is in charge of the archaeology section at the Oxford Museum, and he said that um, this could have been a mirror that was used like any other. I mean, the fact that it's highly decorated does not mean that it was anything other than an everyday device. As I said, the Celtic pre-Illuminati people used to used to put decorations on everything. They they, they valued art highly, and would put their art anywhere, everywhere. But um, it could have been used for applying cosmetics, for for doing make doing your hair or other things. Usually for a woman, probably a, a well-off woman, a high-born woman would use this, because they, they, it's obviously not a cheap device. It's not uh, easy to get hold of these. They probably cost quite a lot in terms of barter or by money, because the Celts did have money. Um, but it could have had it could have had ritual purposes. Just because it looks like a normal mirror, it could have actually been used for shamanic practices. Because mirrors are a part of witchcraft. I know, and they do have mystical qualities, and they were valued because they appeared to reflect. Now, we, we know that pools of, pools of water can sometimes reflect like a mirror can. A mirror is basically any... is basically a surface which reflects light, light back, so it's a... In, in the way it, it arrives, so it doesn't, it doesn't, light doesn't just bounce off it and reflect back in a specular way, or in a sorry, in a diffuse way. It 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 reflects in a specular way, which means the the wavelength and direction and frequency of the light remains the same. So basically, what you see in the mirror, what comes off the mirror, is the, is the, the light is not messed up as it is as it bounces off. It comes off the surface in the same way it arrived. And that means what's why you see exactly what you see what you see as a proper image. Usually the same. Usually as it, well, best mirrors the the reflection is as good quality as the actual object. Um, but I mean, there are many ideas in which these mirrors were seen as a portal to another world. And of course, the famous book *Alice Through the Looking Glass* by Lewis Carroll, who lived in Oxford is a good example of a, a modern piece of modern literature inspired by that idea. Because what you see in a mirror is effectively the same as what you see outside it. Um, the, the mirror reflects the world we see exactly, with one important difference. Everything is back to front. Left is right, right is left. So everything is horizontally inverted. And that could have made people think that they were looking at um, they were actually looking at another world where everything was the other way around. And there's actually a, a story by Arthur C. Clarke called Technical Error. He's a science fiction writer, and this is a science fiction story in which uh, somebody actually is laterally inverted. They actually become... They go through... They, they suffer some kind of accident in a, in a power station, and they are switched around from left to right. 
very interesting story in in a higher dimension. This they're, they're switched around in a, in a parallel universe, and then they're brought back and they're dumped back in ours. So it could be that this mirror was connected with fortune telling or shamanic activity. So it could have been a ritual mirror. Um, anyway, there was a film made about this, which has not been shown. Uh, well, it, it was shown. It was shown once, as far as I know, at the Oxfordshire Museum, and it's not been shown since. I can't find it online. I don't know if you, it's commercially available. I haven't been able to find it commercially available. If anyone can, do let me know. Um, because I'd be, I'd like to see it. I think. I recommend this website here, CelticMirrors.org, because it um, talks about the mirror we've just discussed. They call it the Oxfordshire Mirror, but they talk about a lot of others as well. Um, as I said, there's there's 18 been found in the British Isles. There were 30 in all. Two of them, sadly, were destroyed in the Blitz um, when the bo the bombing on Portsmouth um, or Plymouth actually destroyed a museum where two of these mirrors were held, um, which is a very very s sad thing. Um, he also gives a history of the Celts, who were these people, um, pre-Illuminati people, as I explained, um, who lived, who occupied Western Europe. They were the first Indo-European culture to occupy Europe, and um, they were they, they really flourished in the first millennium BC, in the middle of the first millennium BC. There was the Latin culture, which I've explained. This is a culture from France, which um, was almost definitive in its Celtic style and Hallstatt, the Hallstatt culture, where they found old mines which the Celts used to, to mine salt and used to sell it to the Greeks and the Romans. Um, and of course, the um, the Celtic world was vir was destroyed by the Roman Empire, the Illuminati occupied Roman Empire. Um, they, not all the Celtic lands were conquered; Ireland and Scotland were not, but all the others were. And, um, and basically, the but the, the art is still still there. The funny thing about the Celts, they didn't have a written language, and they left n none of their own written records. Um, however, they the, the written records about the Celts come from other sources, which that, through verbal communication with the Celts. But they had a massive artistic tradition, and they had a great, obviously, a great tradition in spirituality. Um, some of these mirrors were found um, in graves, which were obviously meant to be for very important people. The, the Didcot mirror dates to 75 BC, so it's actually after, it's before even the Julius, Julius Caesar's invasion. Julius Caesar invaded in 55 BC, and he didn't succeed in conquering Britain, but he set up some trade links and things like that, and developed some allies. <laughs> People who thought they were getting a better deal, and things like that, and um, this was earlier. This was a, this was uh, twenty years before that. So this was a completely pure Celtic culture that produced this mirror. Probably belonged to a high-born woman, a queen or princess of some kind, and she may well have used it for applying makeup, making sure her hair looked nice admiring herself as mirrors are used today by people especially women but by all people and um, it could have maybe been that not ritualistic or used for shamanic purposes but the line between the sacred and the profane was not as distinct in Celtic culture as it is in post-Celtic culture Illuminati occupied culture. That's the important point. So please do um, go to CelticMirrors.org for more information. Aren't they beautiful? Aren't they amazing objects? Um, I don't think our culture produces anything like that and I really want to know more but first of all um, in order to find out more I think I'm going to pay a little visit to where that mirror was found and see if I could pick up anything energetically. Um, I may not be able to find the exact spot I'm going to try, but uh, the first step is to uh, do something I'm not very fond of doing and don't enjoy very much, and that's uh, taking a trip to Didcot. So, let us proceed. I'll see you there.
hospital porters, pride and dignity, stop the new world order. Welcome to Herpanmo TV. Well, I'm today I'm in Didcot. Well, I'm actually just outside Didcot. Um, Didcot, a uh, nondescript town in South Oxfordshire, famous for its big chimneys at the power station. <coughs> Revolting place, actually. There's nothing really much there to see. Um, the only time I've ever visited it, I didn't like it. But I've come to this little field outside Didcot. Now, I, I don't know if I'm in the right place because I don't know if this is where they found the mirror. I know they found the mirror somewhere around here, within a, probably within a mile of where I'm standing, the mirror was found. But I'm not sure. But I just wanted to come visit the place, to soak in the atmosphere and just think about things. About what it all means. It's a... Uh, it's an amazing artefact, that mirror. It looks... The design is pretty similar to a modern mirror. Except it's metallic, it's... Um, <coughs> Nowadays it'd be made of plastic or something. I just think it's... It's almost like it's a living link with the past. Not just the past of history, the past of prehistory. The pre-Illuminati world. <coughs> it's easy to forget as we look at the late, the early 20th century world roaring around our ears that what we're seeing now hasn't always been the way it is now. We're looking at something timeless, ubiquitous, but it hasn't. There was a, there was a time before all these things around me, the town, the railway, the power station, the chemtrails in the sky, the aircraft, and there was a time before then, and it wasn't that long ago. It was within perceivable and contemplatable time. But none of the things that exist in this Illuminati world ever existed, or even conceivable, or comp comprehensive to the people who lived there at the time. The world as we know it today is actually quite new. The world of the pre-Illuminati era, the, the pre-Illuminati the, the pre epoch, is thousands of times longer. Depending on how long the Earth has been here, how long the present landforms as we know them have been here. But on this spot, in this little field I'm in, in the edge of some woods, people walked here, on this ground, on this soil, who lived in a world that was literally another universe to our own, yet tangible. The artificial artefacts from that era still exist. Some of them are very well preserved, as you've seen. <coughs> they could be under my feet now, there's probably more waiting to be discovered. And when I was a kid I went to Minster Lovell on a school trip, but it was a ancient village. I can't remember whether it's pre-Illuminati or not, it might be an Anglo-Saxon. There's some debate over whether the, the Anglo-Saxon period was Illuminati or pre-Illuminati. Um, I don't know. But it was all deliberately destroyed by the Illuminati. And it, it was done in phases, I mean there's it's probably still not even complete today. Um, there are still pre-Illuminati people living in the world today. There are tiny, there are tiny few. The, some of the Aborigines of Australia, the Eskimos of Alaska and Siberia, the Indians of the rainforests of the Amazon, maybe the Pygmies of Sub-Saharan Africa. <coughs> but they number probably they probably number in no more than five figures now. They're, they're virtually a, an insignificant shadow remnant, an, e an echo, a whisper of what was once in the past, what's existed in the past. But 
they lacked a lot of what we have. And but they didn't they weren't what I mean by that is I'm talking about modern technology, modern lifestyle. Of course we have the internet and it's computer you're watching this film on right now. Or the mobile phone or whatever it is. Um, technology has brought wonders which would look like magic to those people. Although, incidentally, there's, there is evidence of high, civil, high te technology civilization in the distant past as well, so uh, maybe some of them did have the, the same trinkets that we have. Yet the pre-Illuminati people... I'm talking specifically about the, uh, the Iron Age Celts, the people who made that mirror. <clears throat> the people of the pre-Illuminati indigenous Celts of the British Isles. They they had some things in abundance that we lack and that we ought to envy. They had space, they had time, and they had spirituality. Something which has been drummed out of our society with ruthless precision and efficiency. And I think it's only really in the last few years we have been rediscovering it. The interest in neo-paganism and ancient re revivalism is, is, is a symptom of that. It's a good sign, I think. The destruction of pre the pre-Illuminati. When the, when, the, when the Illuminati rose in Atlantis in the 10th millennium, I think, BC, whenever that was, they they were um, an outcast, they were, they were an opposition, they were an undercover organisation within the Atlantean society. And um, they basically operated as, as secret agents of that society, bringing it down, rotting it from the inside, as uh, opponents, not as controllers. It was, only, they went, it was only after the fall of Atlantis, they went undercover for, they went undercover for over, over 6,000 years when they emerged again in Sumer, in ancient Sumer. This time they were in control, this time they had, they had power. This time they spread out. They spread out from there, they took over Egypt, they took over various other pre-early civilizations. With Alexander the Great, they moved into India to destroy India. They, um, they formed the Roman Empire. They moved into Greece. They, they, the, the original um, Minoan civilization was, well, it was it was conveniently destroyed by a volcano, a volcanic eruption. But then they moved in and they created the Athenian civilization. Then, the, then there was the Roman Empire. It was the Roman Empire. I think this is crucial in terms of this country and these these British Isles, <coughs> um, because the, the Roman Empire spread around the Mediterranean. Then it moved up into Gaul, what's now France. And there was a battle with Vercingetorix, the pre-Illuminati Celtic um, king of the of the Gauls. And this was ironic because um, the irony is that the pre-Illuminati Celts in Gaul were starting to create an an urban civilization, parallel to the Illuminati one of Rome. They were actually taking the steps towards consolidated statehood of a pre-Illuminati type, a type which we will never know what it, we will never know what it could have been. Julius Caesar conquered Vercingetorix and in typical Illuminati fashion, beating him wasn't enough. They had to humiliate him. And this is a key feature of the Illuminati. The psycho psychopathic mindset of the Illuminati as Orwell put it, the, the joy of, 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 of the defeat of your enemy. And I mean, you've seen my video about Blenheim Palace. The, the Blenheim Palace is a mausoleum to Duke John Churchill's defeat of the Spanish during the Spanish War of Succession and his, um, his, uh, his, de his degradation of his enemies. The, the tapestries on the wall, the big column, things like that. Um, because <clears throat> then Rome set its sights on Britain. Now it's, it's
it's an interesting fact that uh, the conquest of Britain was a very, very controversial thing within the Roman establishment. There were many people advising that it was a bad idea. It was, it was seen by many senators and, and advisors as a bad idea. But the Caesar, the Illuminati agent of the Roman Empire um, under Ty um, Tiberius and then Claudius and Nero, they um, they went they firstly by Caesar. Caesar made an attempt to conquer Britain in, 19, in, in 55 BC after he dealt with Gaul. But as he said, he came, he saw, he conquered, but then he he left, he buggered off because the Brits under Cassivellaunus drove him back. The pre Illuminati, it was a victory for pre Illuminati um, natural society against artificial artificial Roman Illuminati society, synthetic, uh, inorganic society. They drove him back. Not before Julius Caesar had captured the, the dog, his, the pet dog of Cassivellaunus, and crucified the, the poor animal, and held him up on, on a crucifix and carried him as a banner, this dead, bleeding dog, on his army. And that is what the Illuminati are like, ladies and gentlemen. And going back to Vercingetorix, when, when Caesar conquered Vercingetorix, they fought, there was a bitter battle fought between Caesar and Vercingetorix. It ended with Vercingetorix being forced to kneel before Caesar and lay his arms at his feet, the feet of the emperor. The defeat wasn't enough. The, the king had to, be, had to be humiliated and degraded mentally, psychologically, in terms of his self-esteem, in terms of his, his spirit, had to be crushed. The defeat of his people and the subjugation of his nation wasn't enough. Vercingetorix was then taken to Rome. He was imprisoned, he was tr put on trial, and he was executed. He was publicly, I think, I think he was beaten, crucified, I don't know, they did something awful to him. I'll look it up, I'll let you know, maybe before the end of this film. Then of course the rest is history. The Roman Empire, the Roman Empire never, ne Roman Empire never conquered all of Britain. It stopped. At, it conquered about half. It stopped at Hadrian's Wall, just over halfway. There was expeditionary forces into Scotland from the the brave boys of the Legion. God, so the military. See, the military religion was alive and well in Roman times. Well, I've talked about I've talked about the military religion before. That was alive and well in Roman times. The soldier was was divine. The robot with his armour who obeyed orders and slaughtered innocent people at the will of the emperor. He was divine. He was uh, given a, he was considered a hero. He was, he was very attractive to women. He was paid with land and in exchange for his service. So that's, nothing's changed. It's the same now. <coughs> And of course, uh, Ireland was also free of the Roman Empire. Ireland was never conquered, and it remained a bastion for pre-Illuminati Celtic civilization for many centuries after that. But it was just—it was just a, a major. It was a ma it was a ma minor obstacle on the way towards global domination for the Illuminati. They, when the Roman Empire eventually fell, it fell because it was no longer any use. It was no longer of any use to them. People shouldn't. People shouldn't um, cheer that, the, as Ben Hurst says, the day Rome falls, there will be a cry of freedom like the world has never heard before. No. All they did was they got rid of the Roman Empire because they didn't need it anymore. And they replaced it with the church, the Roman Catholic Church. And that did conquer Ireland. It did uh, conquer Scotland under St. Um, St. Columba. It conquered Ireland under St. Patrick. And did pretty much what the Roman Empire did. As I've explained in previous videos, the, the Roman legions, when they came to Britain, they worked their way up slowly up the country. And as this is why one of the reasons it was so controversial was an enormous amount of an enormous amount of effort was taken by the Roman Empire into conquering and subjugating Britain. At its peak, a quarter of the entire Roman army was stationed in Britain. This one province. They were determined to hold on to, despite rebellions like Boudicca, which I've described before. Despite the fact that um, they never completely, they never consolidated control over much of even their own province of Britannia. I'm, I'm pleased to say, in what's now Wales and the West Country, they, the tribes held out right through to the fall. But if, 
for some reason it was very, very important to the Roman Empire to hold on to this country. And they built what at the time was, and still is, one of the architectural wonders of the world in order to help them do it. Hadrian's Wall, 70 miles long, right across the north of Britain, north, what's now across Cumbria and Northumberland, with military forts every, every, every mile or so. Thousands of men are manning the turrets to keep to keep Britannia from being invaded from the from the from the Caledonians, the pre-Illuminati people of the north. The Romans destroyed our warrior culture. They disarmed us. They humiliated us. They gave our land to ex-military officers. It's no wonder Boudicca rebelled. The people of this country, like wherever the Illuminati go, the indigenous people fight back. Because history repeats itself. What happened in, with the Roman conquest of Britain is mirrored very, very precisely by the conquista of the Americas, where Christopher Columbus and uh, Cortes and Pizarro and those people went into the Americas and subjugated the people there. It's mirrored almost exactly by the British Empire's conquest of much of the north part of the Americas, North and North America, Africa, Australia. His, I mean, in terms of the conquistadors, it's 1500 years after the Roman Empire, uh, Roman uh, conquest of Britain, but the same things were done. They, they destroyed the indigenous culture. They sub subjugated them. And in the case of the Americas, it's the biggest untold genocide in the, in the history. Up to 80 million people were killed through violence, through slavery, through disease. Um, and I hear people say all the time, we've got to lock the Illuminati up, we've got to put them on trial, we've got to lock them up, we've got to punish them, we've got to kill them, we've got to hang them and stuff like that. And I just... The thing about it is, they've re it's reached a point where there is no punishment bad enough for, for the Illuminati. There's no reparations they could possibly pay that could make up for what they've done. There's no way that I myself, I mean, I, the problem is, it's of course, the reason the Romans wanted to hold on to Britain was, a, was probably spiritual, it's because it was the heart shacker of the earth. And they knew that within the secret society network, they knew that, which is why the Romans were so desperate to hold on to Britain. This is why we have all these ancient monuments everywhere in this, in this country. They, and the thing about it is that the Illuminati are here because it's rather like the parable of the sower, an in, um, sort of inverted version of that. Where it's, the seeds of the Illuminati fell on fallow ground. As David Icke has made this point, they are here because we allowed them here. We, we provided fertile ground for them to grow. So in a sense, it's a learning experience for, for us as a people in terms of our, our, spiritual, our spiritual development. Ian, Ian R. Crane says, maybe they're doing us a really big favor on a higher level. Well, Ian, I can't possibly I can't possibly be as tolerant and as, as uh, worldly wise as you in that respect. I can't see it that way. I'm too much emotion. I'm too emotionally involved. I can't detach emotionally from this issue. I do feel, I, I can't get away from the fact that I feel that they are our enemy and they have to be defeated. And it is a war. It is a war in which I'm on the good side and they're on the bad side. All right, at a higher level, we can all be very Buddhist about it and sit there thinking, oh yes, what an interesting learning experience. But I can't detach like that. I don't have that ability. I think, looking at the early 20th century world surrounding us and thinking about the mirror that was lying for all those, what is it, over 2,000 years beneath the earth, while we were building skyscrapers and building railways and job centres. It's the story of the fall of the pre-Illuminati people of Britain and the world has never been more poignant. As the historian Michael Wood points out, all the more poignant today as we see it, the world rushing around us. It's I feel I've been deprived of my birthright. I feel I've been deprived of 
what is what I'm entitled to as a human being by the society we live in. I feel I've been deprived of it. I'm sure I'm not the only one who feels that way. Probably some of you do as well. It's been taken from me. It's been taken from all of us. I've known this all my life, deep down. But it's only now, in the last few years as an adult, I've been able to describe it and integrate that. Hmm. That's why I have these these feelings. I think I just ha I can't get away from these feelings, and I will never be able to abandon these feelings. I guess, and coming to this field is a kind of a pilgrimage for me. Can we really, possibly? We can never go back. There's no going back in history. We have to deal with what we've got, what we've done, what we've failed to do, and we have to just build with that. We, we have to. We can't turn the clock back. I don't know how much is possible. There are times when I despair. I look at opportunities that have been lost in the past. The defeat of Boudicca's army to the Roman legions is... I, I almost break down even thinking about it, about what could have been, what was lost. Mel Gibson apparently is making a film about Boudicca, which I'll probably go and see, but I'll probably end up having to lie in bed for a week, bawling my eyes out afterwards. I wonder if they can hear us now, our ancestors. They are, they're in whatever spirit world they have it. Or maybe we're reincarnations of them. Maybe that's why I feel the way I do, because I was there at the time in another in another life. I hope so. I hope I fought bravely. I hope I didn't surrender to the Romans. I hope I wasn't a traitor. I hope that's not why I feel so sad because I, I failed at the time back then when I was living a life here. I don't know. That's a depressing thought, isn't it? Oh, I'll have to just think about it. I'll, I'll make some more videos on this subject, I think. Um, but uh, thanks for joining me here at this little field in just outside Didcot blotch on the landscape, the blot on the landscape of South Oxfordshire. The one place on earth where fracking is probably justified, because it might improve it. So, um, anyway, hospital porters, pride and dignity, stop the new world order. Oh, it's alright, I'm okay now. Boudicca moment over. So, I think the moral of this story and the reason I've brought this up is that by building a connection to the past, our sacred past, it's possible we could, this could inspire us to create a better future. And maybe that's what the crop circles are about. Maybe that's why, as I pointed out earlier, this pre-Illuminati art that the Celts produced, the, the Celtic art, the knots and the swirls and things like that, do resemble crop circles. Because it is, in, it is in this sacred past that we could find a reconnection to the, a, world, a world without the Illuminati. A world without you, as Neo says to the Matrix. It's something to think about. It's something to, to ask yourself. And um, that Celtic mirror got me thinking in those terms. This is why I'm probably going to make some more videos on archaeology and and the ancient past and um, maybe find some of these more some more of these connections to the present and to the model of the future because we it is something I think perhaps the human species needs to get hold of this is maybe why people are turning to druidism and neo-paganism like Wicca and things like that and like the stuff in Glastonbury that I do you remember my video about Glastonbury which less than a hundred of you have watched it but it's one of my favorite videos I'll probably put a link in the description box to that too now. Um, I just... Uh, I think that if we're going to move forward into the post-Illuminati world and go through that difficult transitional period which I've talked about before, 
we need to have something to keep us on course and maybe this the mirrors the crop circles the ancient past and stuff like that and how close it is how we can hold it in our hands we can hold one of these mirrors in our hands just like our pre illuminati ancestors did maybe that is something that we need in order to achieve that so thanks for watching hospital porters pride and dignity stop the new world order